Hey, this is Dave from metalepidemic.com. Thank you for checking out our YouTube video. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button below if you like this type of content, and we hope you enjoy the review. So, for this review, Duncan and I have been checking out the new release from progressive death metal band Black Crown Initiate. The band's new release, Violent Portraits of Doomed Escape, will be released on August 7th via Century Media Records. This band consists of James Dorton on vocals, Andy Thomas and Ethan McKenna on guitars, Nick Shaw on bass, and drums on this album were provided by Gabe Sieber um, after drummer Jesse Baylor left in 2018. Sieber has played with the likes of The Kennedy Vale, Wretched Dawn, and Alter Beast. So album number three comes after a four-year gap since the band's last album, uh, Selfs We Cannot Forgive, and also sees the band join up with a new label, Century Media Records. Good label. I do like yep. Century Media. 100%. Um, I'll, I'll go on record here, Duncan, to say I've actually always been quite a fan of Black Crown Initiate. Um I think they are going on previous albums. Very, very, very good songwriters. Um, music is always quite interesting, quite dynamic with a lot of light and shade. Uh, but they have gone through some changes in the last three or four years with obviously the departure of their drummer, as I mentioned. But also, um, guitarist Wes Hoch in 2016 um, was actually replaced by the original guitarist, Ethan McKenna, who was on the band's 2013... <laughs> Keep up 2013 EP Songs of the Crippled Bull, but unfortunately, back then he couldn't become a full time member uh, due to any personal obligations. So, there's, there's a meme out there of like a dog and like math equations behind it, and the, the, <laughs> the owners saying, like, the dog needs to go to the VET, and the dog's trying to work out what that spells. Uh, it's kind of how I felt there when you were talking about it. I was like, because you were like that, they lost their drummer, and I was like, who cares about the drummer? Drummers are interchangeable. You can just replace them with a machine, and everything will be fine. <laughs> Literally how I feel about drummers. Um, Dave's a drummer, by the way. Uh, just, just so you know, just so you know. Um, and he can be replaced with a machine. Uh, so, uh, but you were doing the guitar thing, I was like, what the fuck is he saying? Right, right, that, that, it does actually when you spell it out that way that does make sense yeah uh, for for um putting the cards down on the table this is the first black crown initiate album i have ever listened to what the, the fuck i know dave busy man i am not doing my job duncan uh you're not doing your job and i masturbate too much <laughs> well so we we're just to... uh, just being honest here <laughs> too honest why are you giving me the cut at sign on the screen <laughs> <laughs> too far <laughs> Never too far. Can never go too far. So yeah, first, first, first time listen. For first time me. listen. And, oh, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to get into this one. Yeah, well, I'm interested to see uh, hear your thoughts, but I was also interested to see if any of those changes actually made a difference to the overall sound in Black Crown Initiate. You uh, um, better have, Dave. Otherwise, this is the longest setup the <laughs> climax in the history of recorded podcasts. Oh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, I was, a, I was a big fan of their 2014 album, The Wreckage of Stars. Um, a really impressive release for a first full-length album. Um, its follow-up album, Selves We Cannot Forgive, for me, and I hate to say this, it felt like a bit of a slide backwards for me. Um, it wasn't a bad album by any means. Um, it just felt like some of the tracks maybe overstayed their welcome a little. Um, and although it did have moments where they really did kind of come to life, those memorable moments just didn't happen enough for me on that album. So you weren't angry, um, you were just disappointed? <laughs> yes, Duncan. <laughs> it's even worse, it's even worse. Um, Violent Portraits of Doomed Escape, however, is a different story altogether. From the first track, this thing sounds like a band that are completely refocused. The quality of the songwriting, for instance, has just been elevated in every possible way. It's Musically, it's more dynamic, it's more emotive, more intelligent, and far more memorable than their previous album. Um, everything for me just seemed more refined, um, but the elements that made 
this band so likeable in the past are still there. You've still got that kind of progressive death metal intensity, coupled with like these kind of soaring melodies that are just completely kind of bursting out of these tracks. Um, from the like the eight minute opener, invitation, um, I was completely hooked. Completely hooked. Firstly, that guitar tone mm-hmm. is monstrous. <laughs> um, <laughs> I may have picked the wrong voice for the word monstrous. Yeah, there. Valley Girl doesn't quite work with the word monstrous. Monstrous girlfriend. Um, Unless you're talking I mean, about descriptive words for the new Gucci sale. Um, <laughs> which I will be hitting up after this review. As um, will I. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, eight string guitars, so maybe that was to be expected, but. Is um, it eight string guitars? Eight string guitar. Fucking thinking. hell, man! Remember um, when they were a novelty? Yeah, totally. Yeah, um, but the, the clarity and the, and the tone of that guitar is perfect. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of bands like they go down that kind of eight string route, and uh, they have a tendency to end up kind of muddy in their sound. I think we were um, going to say plane three. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Um, no, I was going to say, you know, the sound that becomes a bit muddy sounding, and it's still, yeah, it sounds heavy, but sometimes they lose a lot of that kind of dynamic range instead mm-hmm. of adding to it. Um, not here, though. Um, this sounds crisp, and it still sounds punishingly heavy. Um, and the sheer kind of weight of it just hits you on that opening track after a kind of calm, kind of acoustic introduction to the track. Um, I know Andy Thomas has said in the past that um, Sugar are one of his favourite bands. Um, and you can hear that influence bleeding through on the kind of heavier parts of even of that first track invitation. Um, although it's kind of mixed with like a like a between the buried and me mm-hmm. meets kind of rivers of Nile kind of progginess mm-hmm. um, vocally uh, and melodically um, though. Um, this this is where this album they just kind of it's where oh, they shine, Dave. It's what it, puts them above the pack. It just exceeded my expectations, totally did. Um, and again, like this, the first track, perfect choice of opener. Um, the band really kind of go to town on showing you how kind of well versed they've become at nailing that perfect balance of, of light and shade. Mm-hmm. Um, vocalist uh, James Dorton, um, he does the kind of heavier side of things. Um, he really, he's devastating as a vocalist. Like yeah. that, that tone is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, from the kind of full-on like death metal roars um, that are almost like demonic at times, um, but we also get this like amazing contrast between James um, his kind of textured screams alongside this kind of fantastic melody from uh, Andy Thomas, who's mm-hmm. the guitarist, um, and you hear a lot of that kind of light and shade, like both musically and vocally, uh, and most of the tracks on this release, uh, from tracks like Son of War, which has this like kind of tool like kind of rhythmical very oddness tool. Yeah, very um, on the verses but it's like bolstered with these heavy like like the tonality of like Meshuga but um the chorus though on that track <clears throat> um and it's something else we get like another kind of like vocal eargasm from uh, Andy Thomas mm-hmm. um it's just so like infectious um but what actually made it even more of a standout for me is uh, the, the blast beats <laughs> Yeah. from Gabe Sieber beneath it like clean soaring melody and blast beats mm-hmm. and it's an odd pairing on paper you would um, think Dave but f- totally works mm-hmm. totally works I loved it I loved it see that's where you do the valley girl voice see, like, you're <laughs> <laughs> loved it <laughs> see so much better I'm learning, I'm learning. <laughs> um, here's a thing for you though no a similarity that I picked up on with this album and it's probably not a conscious influence by the band um, but it's one that I heard multiple times throughout this album you're probably going to go Dave you're talking shit but I'm going to I'm going to say it anyway when I first noticed it was probably probably in the intro of um, Trauma Bonds which kind of starts with a one of the best songs on the album in my opinion yeah. as well the yeah. chorus is fucking incredible <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it kind of starts with like a clean strummed guitar it's got like a kind of like a, either like a chorus or a flanger effect on it, um, and it reminded me of a band that people listen to this. Well, most likely I've never heard of. You say crazy term that I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> well, depending on your age, um, but 
Duncan and I will have certainly heard of the band because we are, you know, in our later later years of life. Um, Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Uh, but after I heard the similarity, I started noticing it more and more on this release. First musically and then vocally as well. Um, specifically on Trauma Bonds and um, Holy Silence. Um, and then even again on uh, Death Comes in Reverse. But once I noticed it, I, I couldn't not hear it. Um, the band, I'm re- I know I've had a big build up to this. Um, the band I'm referring to is a band called Taproot. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I see, I, I see exactly where you're coming from. Yeah, I, yeah. For, for those not in the know, um, Taproot were a, a new metal band, I suppose, back in the late. They started 90s? off as new metal. Yeah, they certainly yeah. became. They were more an alternative. True. Rock yeah. group. In the kind of late nineties, yeah, late nineties, they were new metal, um, and they went right through till about twenty twelve. I think that was their last album. Mm. Um, vocally, there's a, a real similarity between Andy Thomas and Stephen Richards from yeah. Taproot. Um, <clears throat> not so much like the heavier death metal stuff, but melodically they, they have a very similar tone. Mm-hmm. And then musically, you could hear it as well in the kind of cleaner, more kind of melodic riffs and passages. On like that kind of intro to Trauma Bonds and Holy Silence, I got pick it up as well. But once you hear it, if you go back and listen to it, once you hear it, you'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, that sounds like that. Yeah, and that sounds as well. I just like, I couldn't not hear it. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to the album, sorry. Um, what you what were you thinking? I've spoke way too long now. What are you thinking about this album? Hey, I love this album. This is oh, the, the very, very epitome of what I talk about all the time during this recording, which <laughs> is uh, not only depth, but, you know, not being afraid to blend things and, 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 and add elements of that kind of the, the darkness and the shade uh, and the light in your music. This album has it uh, like in buckets. I, 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 I was blown away on the first listen. Like mm-hmm. actually blown away because I didn't know what to expect and you get the really kind of <laughs> heavy stuff that comes in on Invitation and when that melody hit me for the first time I was just like, what the fuck am I listening to here? <laughs> and then the fact that the album just dances between it and the mixtures of Tool for sure there's little mm-hmm. bits of Intronaut, which is like one of my favourite releases this year, probably coming from the Tool side of things here and the uh, kind of death metal stuff as well. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I picked out like bits of things like Anathema um, in here as well. That I, I you know, later day Anathema, not the early stuff. But <laughs> the, you know, um, there's like so much going on here. Um, but and this is a big thing for me when I talk about bands that bring a lot the table musically mm-hmm. um, not to the detriment of the songwriting so some of the songs are a bit longer mm-hmm. but those are the songs that feel like we have room to experiment and mix things up without necessarily just doing it for the sake of trying to be obscure or abstract mm-hmm. and the interesting thing about it is maybe the most commercial song on this release is Trauma Bonds mm-hmm. Which has this fucking incredible chorus. Lyrically, it's kind of bleak, um, <laughs> but it, it's just really uplifting, really positive sounding um, chorus. Now that track is one of the longer ones on the the release, and it follows and kind of like verse chorus, verse chorus structure. Mm-hmm. But it can run that length, doesn't get boring, as heavy as fuck when it needs to be, and has an amazing catchy chorus. Mm-hmm. And it, I don't know how easy it is for any band to do that, you know, to, mm. to, to do a song which is six minutes long, which follows a very conventional, uh, almost kind of pop song kind of grouping of this is the structure and so we're playing it, um, but manage to maintain that integrity and the heaviness as well as the, the you know, the, the work they do in the vocals. Um, and then, you know, like even later on when... You, you get, uh, there's a, a track called Bellows, which is the kind of thing you would expect on a Tool album, which mm-hmm. is almost like, it's like, I don't know how you just <laughs> throat singing, it's like, you know, like, yeah. you know, um, that was a strange turn in the album, though, that, that track, like, I was just like, what is yeah. actually going on here? Like, two minutes of, I'm assuming it's James Dorton doing this fucking throat weird... singing almost you know what i mean it yeah. kind of feels like a weird like mongolian throat singing or whatever it is. I, i've i've made that noise before like see even when you get that like deep inner ear itch yeah ever have one of those yeah I've, I've found myself making that noise you know when you kind of get it with a cotton bud you need to make that kind of 
that yep. noise to, to vibrate it and scratch it. I've done that myself. Yeah, yeah. Th- I mean, it's authentic, Dave. And, I, don't um, that's what happened, I don't know. <laughs> but, but I think it serves a really interesting purpose because it does land right in the middle of the album and it does completely separate the listening experience. So I think, weirdly, it works. <laughs> Because what comes after is uh, Death Comes in Reverse, which is another fucking banger on this album, like total banger. And then we get a couple of nice long songs that start to feel out a bit more, get a bit more experimental, um, before kind of leaning back into what is ultimately the kind of closing out of the album on Here's the Path. I think this is, like, the production is fucking great. The guitar mm-hmm. yeah. sound, whether it's... I would never in a million years, if you'd put up, like, like you know, one band uses, a, like, an eight-string guitar and you'd put up three albums, I would never in a million years thought this was an eight-string guitar for mm-hmm. all the reasons that we said at the start. I just don't associate those clean tones and sounds and definition with with an eight-string guitar at all. Um, mm-hmm. So that, that kind of surprises me. It totally makes sense on the heavier shit, though. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the, the guitar work is super impressive. Vocals crushing. Absolutely fucking crushing. But juxtaposed excellently well with these melodies, which are fucking hooky. You know what I mean? They mm-hmm. really, really, really are. Every single one of them dares you to sing like see live this is the sort of thing where you get the whole fucking crowd singing on these choruses yeah. it just it, like once again the hair on the back of my neck stand up when I'm listening to it and it's just a really 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 well crafted song the drummer as he beast um, mm. I, I loved and I'm just going the, the bass player's handsome I didn't say I, I, I'll be honest I haven't said anything about the bass player so I'm just going to throw that in there um, no I, I fucking love this this to me is a a super interesting listen. Weirdly, when we first when we first brought back the podcast, mm-hmm. way back in March, what's it? It was March. It's the mm-hmm. groom, it's March. Um, mm-hmm. And the albums that we were talking about back then, whether it was bands like Duel or Catatonia, um, we were talking about how you know the, there's all these different elements going on, and long form songs and longer sounding albums that take you on a journey. Mm-hmm. And the last little while, we've kind of moved away from that. We've been talking about very kind of organically kind of lateral sounding albums. You know, they, they, they push you in one direction to the end and then it's done. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I love that about the genre that we're talking about, that you can have both. And when both are crafted well, they mm-hmm. both reward you as a listener in completely different facets. And I think Black Crown and Initiate are at their best when they are challenging the listener with really, really, really interesting kind of elements they're adding into their songs, whether it is, like you say, a blast beat over the, you know, down in the background of these sword and clean vocals, which mm-hmm. just catches you off guard. You just don't expect it at all, but it works. And then you kind of think to yourself, every band that has the ability to do a blast beat should have been doing this because you're missing out a trick. Mm. Um, but all these different elements add up to a super listen. I mean, this is one that I've listened to several times. Um, mm. Mostly, and this is when you sent the, because Dave sends me through a group of albums at a time. Um, the album artwork is what had caught my attention. Straight away, it's a very colourful uh, one. And it has, there's a bit of kind of mysticism in there, a bit of a tarot card feel. So I'm going to listen to this straight away. Uh, and this has been on loop since. Um, I've, I've played this one to death, so to speak. Uh, yeah, I, I think it is fucking brilliant. Um, I did not know there was albums before this. Uh, did not know the, the backstory, the complicated backstory of the band. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, they, they've landed a great record label. They've just put out a fucking stunning album. So mm. I can only expect bigger and better things in the future uh, for Black Crowd. Uh, Black. I cannot say this name, Black Crown Initiate. I want to say Black Crowd. Black Crowd Instigate. Uh, it's Black cl- Clown? Clown. Black Crown Initiate. I think I think this is I think weirdly this the the actual the actual name it's still laughing at me. The actual name of the album completely evokes the sound. The uh, violent portraits of Doom and Escape. I think that to me is the perfect name for it because the, there are elements here that are as bleak and dark as you like 
and then there are other bits that sound like they're the happiest band on the planet. <laughs> just, just, it's fucking awesome. I love it. Yeah. So there you um, go. I've talked <laughs> long now, Dave. All right, that's fine. Equal. So, so <laughs> um, yeah, I loved it as well. I thought it was a great album. Um, my only very small criticism uh, came from the the kind of middle of that album. I, I didn't quite take to. Below. to uh, yeah, I didn't take, quite take to that as much as you did. Um, I thought it was a bit of a strange turn on the album. Um, and even the, the, the track after that, you were liked, it was yeah. one of my least favourites on the album. Well, it's because you're bad. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously wrong, but um, yeah. Death Comes in Reverse, um, it took a few listens for that to kind of start to kind of grow on me, I think. I think it was the verses that I had an issue with. Mm. Um, or not an issue, they just, they just didn't grab me. Um, but the chorus more than makes up for it. Um, and then the last track is kind of more than a, or it's more more of an outro than a yep. an actual song. Um, but the track before Holy Silence is pretty outstanding in every respect, so I wasn't overly disappointed. Um, such an engaging album. Um, it's hard not to be impressed with what Black Crown Initiative have produced here. Uh, for me, it's by far the best thing they've done, uh, and I'm more than certain it will kind of project this band into the upper echelons of the progressive death metal rankings um i actually wouldn't be surprised if this album starts to creep into my end of year list after more time with it mm -hmm. i would not be surprised um yeah stunning album uh well worth checking out it's a high recommendation from myself um rating wise um i am going to go with a 4.5 out of 5 I'm with you 100%. I think oh. that gives, the 4.5 to me gives it room to grow because I'm going to continue listening to this one. Mm -hmm. uh, very much like yourself, this could, like, for all the reasons I really enjoy the Intronaut album, even mm -hmm. though they're not, they don't sound like Intronaut. There's just elements here that are very Intronauty. Yeah. So what I did there? Intronauty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you bad boy. Uh, <laughs> the, the, there are elements in there that kind of put them in, like, if I'm crafting the top 10 list uh, for the year one of those bands is likely to be in it um, not both I wouldn't put them both in there so this might be the one to push the other one out mm. watch this space Ooh. there we go um, yeah so that is um, our review of the new album from Black Crown Initiate it's called Violent Portraits of Doomed Escape um, and it's out on Century Media, Century Media Records on uh, August 7th um, if you want to check out the band in the meantime, you can check them out um, on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Black Crown Initiate. And uh, that is our review. Thanks very much for checking it out. Much appreciated. Um, let us know in the comments below what you think of the album when you hear it. Um, happy to hear your, your comments and what you think. Um, are we right? Are we wrong? Let us know. Um, we'll be back with the new review very, very soon. Um, but until then, take care and we'll see you later, girlfriend. You thought about that too long, and I think in your head it was going to be better than it turned out. Yeah, it landed a bit flat there. Bye, everyone. Bye.